Welcome to Bloodbath and Beyond. Today we review Rob Zombie's 31. Death is the only escape. Written and directed by Rob Zombie, starring Malcolm McDowell, Richard Brake, Sherry Moon Zombie, and Jeff Daniel Phillips. 31 is about a group of carnival workers who are kidnapped and forced to play a game of 31, which takes place on Halloween every year, where people need to try and survive for 12 hours as a series of different killers try and murder them. And it's kind of like a deranged casino game because we also have very rich people placing bets on who they think are going to die next. So what do we like? As a fan of Rob Zombie's style, I enjoyed the style of this film. Rob Zombie has a really great way of creating unique characters in a way that you're going to enjoy them. The ones who were captured were carnies and they were badasses. And like, the people who were trying to kill them were just as badass and just as gritty. So, it was kind of nice that everyone was on like equal playing grounds. And it allows the audience to kind of wager on who they want to die next as well. This is very reminiscent of movies like Running Man and another movie that we reviewed recently, Slashers. And in this one, our killers were pretty similar, but they all had their little unique nuances to them. And they were all called Something Head. So we have Doom Head, we have Psycho Head, Schizo Head, and just like a bunch of different heads, and it kind of reflects what kind of killer that will be. The most interesting of the heads, I would say, would be Sick Head. His character was just aggressive and entertaining in an odd way. He's a little person and is trying to be Hitler for some reason and has a big swastika on his chest, but he was a fucking gangster. He was kicking the shit out of people, and it was great. Fucking Chihuahua! But I think the real standout character is Doomhead, played by Richard Brake. The movie starts off with a really, really intense monologue. See, I don't think the last sound to puncture your eardrum should be the twang of your body falling apart. Snap! Ooh! <laughs> Grunge. He's just psycho, and I thought that Richard Brake did an excellent job portraying all of his different emotions. Which brings us to his counterpart, Sherry Moon Zombies. The way that they developed her I absolutely loved. You think at one moment she's gonna just be like the innocent one. And then the next thing you know, she's like, let's go just like rip their heads off and kill them. She's just so powerful and strong and she portrayed that character perfectly. And this is a welcome change from her other characters. I mean, we all know Baby. In this one, she actually had some depth to her, and that was nice to see. And she's not bad to see either. She's she's just as hot as she's always been. I really thought Rob Zombie did a great job creating this environment. The set looked awesome. There's so many details in this movie that you can't help but feel like where they are is like a real creepy place that you don't want to be. You can smell how disgusting these rooms are. And even the wardrobe too, like everybody just looks gross. It's just a lot of mayhem and these people have to go through a ton. In the weapons, aside from the chainsaw, everything's just more blunt. It's stuff that is gonna hurt them more internally. When someone's getting hit with a baseball bat that has like a metal plate on it, it's gonna sting them and bruise them bad but they can still move. So it was nice that it wasn't all just like chop and slash. Now let's move on to our dislikes. There was a lot of hype built up around how graphic and gory this movie was going to be. There were blood sprays and there are some deaths. Unfortunately, you don't see the gore that you think you're going to see. And some of the reason for this is the shaky ass camera that they use. The shaky cam is terrible. This is one of those movies where you don't need it. And you're not sick of what's on the screen, you're getting sick because you can't focus. And that sucks. In most scenes when there's a fight going down, there's actually two fights going down and they intercut the shaky cam shots from one fight scene to the other. Plus they have a strobe light going on, and so you're all types of disoriented, and it's really frustrating to watch. And with all of this, the camera is way too close. Everything is a really tight shot, and you don't know what the hell's happening. The first shot in this film was great. And then after that, that style of cinematography was not there, which is disappointing because I absolutely love the opening shot. Just a note, a nitpicky note on that. Um, though it was a monologue, they had two different shots, and the makeup on our doom head was not consistent, and it kind of threw me off. I also think that with the introduction of all these different serial killers, that 
We could have had some maybe flashbacks that kind of show more about these characters because these are characters that are cool that you want to know more about and some of them don't last too long to be honest. The way they set it up is it's this grand introduction. Here is your first head. Sick head. Feast your eyes and behold, sick head. We meet him. We get to know him. He leaves. We're thinking, all right, who are the next four? The game begins. <laughs> who are the other four? I would have liked to see more of E.G. Daly as sex head, because she was banging hot. She just wanted to eat that spinach. See you later, Popeye. Hmm. I'm gonna go get me some spinach. Speaking of eating the spinach, did anyone else notice that one guy eating the booty like groceries in the back of the trailer? That's not a dislike, that's just props to that dude. Now man, can't you see I'm busy back here? Another huge issue with this film was the pacing. I got really bored around the 50 minute mark. We just have characters that just keep wandering around, not doing a whole lot. And then the climax of the film, the end, it wasn't a climax. It just kind of stopped and it angered me further. <laughs> now it's time for our final thoughts and ratings. As a fan of Rob Zombie's work, I think this is one of my least favorite films from him. I really did enjoy the aesthetics that he had. Uh, it had a great tone, a great atmosphere. And I really love the characters, especially Richard Brake as Doomhead. But unfortunately, the pacing was just off. And I got really bored towards the end. And then when the end came, I just left the film completely unsatisfied. I love the concept of this movie. And I really hope somebody does this concept better in the future. So I'm going to give this two and a half extremely lucky Leos out of five. 31 was kind of a letdown for me because I do enjoy Rob Zombie's films. It was just kind of a cat and mouse game with these five heads that I didn't care about and one head that didn't get enough screen time that should have. It's just a film filled with disappointments, but I do appreciate the story. It wasn't poorly executed, it just could have been done a little better. I still enjoyed the film, and I know it's gonna be a hit or miss for a lot of people, but it's worth just checking it out, especially if you're a fan of Rob Zombie. So with that being said, I'm gonna give this three posh Malcolm McDowell's out of five. As always, thank you for watching. Like this video and comment below with your thoughts on the film if you've seen it. If you haven't and you do want to check it out, there are links in the description where you can find it. Let us know your favorite head. Let us know in the comments and make sure you subscribe to the channel to stay updated with everything Bloodbath and beyond.